Welcome. Thank you. As you just heard, my name is Magdalena and I currently run two organizations which I also co-founded and I'm the co-CEO because I really love working together with other people. So I share my competences and also my work. One of it is the Studio MM04. We are a consulting agency in the field of sustainable fashion. And the other one is FORN, the Berlin Fashion Hub. It's a new project we just founded. It's a registered cooperative uh, building a physical and digital space base in Berlin for fashion innovation and, of course, sustainability. And this is what I'm working with uh, since about, uh, I don't know, 2005. So uh, that I dedicated my, nearly my whole working life into the field of sustainability and fashion in different roles, as we just heard. And uh, I always been asked, like, what was your turning point? Why did you start working with sustainability? And I honestly must say, it was actually not the birth of my kids, as it is for a lot of people, but it is something uh, which Janine just talked about <laughs> very much. Um, it is about two emotions. It is about the love for fashion, because I actually love fashion, and it's my anger about the industry and the really negative impact about, uh, from this industry. And I learned from psychology that you change the things that matter most to you. And things start to matter as soon as you are involved on an emotional level, which probably also answers one of the big questions we deal with. We do know about climate change since the 70s, and we also do know about um, really negative impacts of the fashion industry, about uh, bad working conditions since about the 2000s. We do know also about the overconsumption driven by the industry since and the huge amount of clothing ending up in landfills or getting burned since at least the COVID crisis just hit us. But we don't change anything about it. We don't work towards the sustainable future we are talking about here. Yes, of course, I mean, the industry is taking efforts in uh, doing and uh, taking more steps towards sustainability. But honestly, the efforts towards sustainability are actually eaten up by the growth rates of the whole industry in total. So the question is, why, why don't the industry change? Why, do, why don't we change as people and as humans? And I think it is because we are not involved emotionally. And I think it has to do with the communication. Because looking at the communication of the environmental movement, we can see that the environmental movement is communicating with scientific facts and figures, which is absolutely necessary, and it must be the base for all decisions and frameworks, uh, especially in the politics. But, and I, can, I think here we can learn from the fashion industry, because the fashion industry is this industry which is one of the best industries to communicate on a highly emotional and visual level. And this is the industry which makes us buy all that stuff we basically don't need. So if we are using the language of fashion to communicate other mes uh, messages, we can be so much stronger. And I think we can also drive change quicker. And here's why. Every one of us has a relationship to fashion, and we all practice it. And this is fashion is the way we tell our story to the world express our personalities and relate to others. This has been the case throughout all history and in every culture. Adornment to the body is storytelling. Fashion is our language. With how we dress, we communicate, both intentionally and unintentionally. Our interests, profession, gender, socioeconomic status, the groups we try to belong to, heritage, religion, and so on. 
And even people who don't care about fashion follow trends and are impacted by it, because obviously we all wear clothes. And there's also an interaction between fashion and society. Looking at the history of fashion and historical dresses and styles and looks, they always tell us something about the state of society and societal changes. Fashion is reflecting the moods and socioeconomic and cultural changes of our society. And then there's an interaction I just said. It is re-influencing society as well by the stories fashion is telling us, because they matter too. That, for example, having a thin body is desirable, that more expensive equals more value, or we're told that new things will make us happier. And these stories are sometimes not doing so great. I mean, the story that having a thin body is desirable is causing like eating disorders among young girls. We all know that. So there is an interaction between fashion and society, and it is re-influencing each other. And fashion is also signaling behavior on a consumer level, especially that we are now living in an age of influencing, <laughs> where the branding of lifestyle is more prevalent than ever. Fashion is also influencing all consumer goods industries with promoting certain lifestyles, which then follow and impacting other industries as well. So the influence and impact of the fashion, storytelling and industry is mostly or most often underestimated. Just some numbers. Talking about influence, I just wanted to throw like some zeros on the screen <laughs> to just give you an idea on the economical size of this industry is actually 1.7 trillion US dollar annual turnover and it has a growth rate of about 18%. In Germany, consumers spend 65.3 billion euros on clothing and shoes, which makes Germany the second biggest market in Europe right after the UK. So also, in an economical sense, the industry is relevant. And it is, of course, also impacting <laughs> on another level. Fashion is also often cited as the second most polluting industry in the world, which is actually not right to put it like that, because it's impossible to calculate the accurate ecological and social impact of the whole industry. In fact, negative impact, both on our environment and work, is, is so bad, big that for me it actually doesn't matter if it is the second or third or fifth. It is just harmful, and I think that we can agree on. And when we look holistically at fashion's impact, we can begin to understand just how important this industry is for how we navigate the rest of the 2020s, the decade which will decide on how the entire future for our planet looks like. So let's use the power of fashion and the creativity which lies within to drive the needed transformation of our industry, but in fact, of our world. Why not design products with healthy ingredients and the human working conditions? Why not build resilient recycling systems so we can continue, we can't continue to pollute our planet with pre and post consumer waste? Why not use regenerative agriculture for our natural resources? So more fertile soil is produced and ecosystems are preserved, which actually creates a real positive impact. Why not use materials which tie CO2 and, re and removing it from the atmosphere? Why not build supply chains that empower workers, local communities and historically oppressed and colonized cultures? 
and there's far more ideas out there. These impacts and more go far beyond just being a neutral force. They make our world viable and full of opportunities for the next generations. They offer new status quo and not the preservation of old systems. So let's change our mindset from less harmful to positive impact and use the highly emotional and visual language of fashion to involve people on an emotional level. Let's encourage consumers, designers and corporations with our storytelling to really find ways for measurable impact, positive impact, in social, cultural and environmental ways. We need this to be the new language of holding companies accountable and also holding ourselves accountable. We need the story of fashion to center around what really matters to us. If we do this, fashion is an industry whose positive changes will have enormous ripple effects. This begins with changing how we talk about fashion, how we think about fashion, how we legislate fashion, and how we behave as fashion consumers, producers, and organizations. So what does storytelling for positive fashion impact look like in practice? It means valuing real quality and what we already have. It means talking about how we design systems for positive impact, not just products, which also means unlearned capitalism to a certain extent. It means sharing profits fairly with industry workers at all levels of the value chain and give voice to their needs and their visions. It means designing reverse supply chains for true circularity. It means promoting diverse standards of beauty and more. Changing the story of fashion means framing sustainability as an opportunity, not as a barrier. By understanding psychology and using the language of fashion, we can drive the transformation towards a more sustainable future faster. Changing the industry itself has already an enormous impact on our future. Taking the influence on other consumer goods industry into account, the impact is even bigger. We as humans change what matters to us. And I love fashion. And that's why I've dedicated my working life to transforming the fashion industry. Thank you. <laughs>